All right, uh, Josue, uh, sorry for the delay here. Uh, I'm just going to go and uh, get right to it, and kind of the same as we did before. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm just going to start with the, the rib cage here. So uh, for the most part, it's not too bad. A um, couple things that I would say um, that I would do. Let's get up here. Um, is that you can see it's a little bit slanted. I think like the, the overall like structure of it could be a little bit better. Also, it tends to be a little bit more, there should be a little more girth towards the bottom and a little bit thinner towards the top. So I'll show you what I mean by that. So if I draw something next to it here, um, so let's see. See my okay, and then we'll just um, let's see. Actually, I went a little bit low. Whoops. Um, but I would try to uh, have it a little bit more weighted towards the bottom, like that. Would be okay. I would also maybe show the clavicle here, which, which I know it's not actually in there, but it's not a bad idea. Um, and then you kind of did the, you know, you have a manubrium here, and then the gladiolus, and then the little xiphoid process. Um, but this actually attaches to the top of that, and then the rib cage is kind of tucked underneath it as it goes. So, um, uh, it's not too bad. That most, mostly works. Um, this one, if you look over here, if you took your lines and you drew vanishing points, right? Like that. And then I did the same thing here. Uh, you see it's actually going the opposite. This side is long, or longer than, the, than this one. When it should be vanishing, you know, like this, right? So I would just say, again, what you want to try and do as much as possible, because I kind of see it consistently. Some of your stuff looks a little flat. Um, just try to think of them as the the uh, most base uh, primitive shape that you can think of. So like for like your rib cage here, I would just start off with like kind of a simple egg thing here. And then you can uh, should be able to draw making it a little bit too round here but uh, then you can kind of draw the stuff coming off of it like that kind of a thing um, and uh, same thing here because then if you look at your hips here see how they're going like this which is kind of weird so um, just try to you know take that into account the hips in general are sort of hard to draw honestly I usually kind of screw those up I actually have to usually use some sort of um, reference whatever I'm doing it oops on that kind of a thing here but I think you get the idea um but see you want it to all be going towards a vanishing point more yours just feels a little bit out of whack so I would just say with that, and it'd be okay also to, you know, do some indications of ribs and things like that. So, and don't forget the sacrum here and then the coccyx, which I don't really have in mind either, but, uh, you get kind of the idea. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, again, it's just a little bit, I like that you're trying to use some straights there, but it just feels a little bit, I don't know, a little bit off. So if this is if this is the front, okay, so because um, then you'd have this like that. It's a little bit too much of an angle, but you kind of get the idea. So, and then the neck comes out this way with the head, if that makes sense. So um, not too bad. Uh, but again, if you look, it just looks a little bit like, almost like it's smeared. You are right where it's supposed to go like that, but, I don't know, it's a little bit off to me. Um, 
I might, so if this is the spine, uh, I don't know what you looked at or what you saw, um, but so you have um, seven cervical up at the top, and then you have um, 12 thoracic, and then you have five um, lumbar, okay? And then you have the sacrum here, which is just fused lumbar and then the coccyx, okay? Which is the little tailbone nipple thing on the end. Um, basically, the best way to look at it is that this is your neck. So your seven cervical is where it sticks out a little bit more, okay? Um, and then the 12 thoracic, that is the same that the ribs attach to. Uh, and then the lumbar are the one that it's not attached to. And then this obviously is where the, uh, the ilium attached to the sacrum as well as the pubic bone, which actually doesn't attach to it, but that's what that all is. So I would just say with this is that, um, obviously there's like an S shape, right? Kind of goes like this, that your body forms. All right. So, uh, yours is just a little weak. Um, and what I would do is say, okay, so your 12, um, or I'm sorry, your seven, uh, cervical would be here, right? So you got your atlas and axis. Axis is the one that holds the head. And, uh, and then usually that's where it starts to go in the opposite direction, which would be where these, um, thoracic are. And then the lumbar starts to go in the other direction. And this is where they get really fat and bold and then kind of come off. But I think it could be a little bit stronger because the neck actually kind of sticks out generally like this. Cause you even saw your rib cage, right? When you had it, you notice how like it was, you did it up here, how it's kind of slanted. And then that follows like that and then your neck kind of comes out and then you have your your jaw here if that makes sense um so it might also uh well see i don't know how like technical we're getting with the the thing here but uh if you look at um a typical let's just say thoracic um vertebrae you'll notice that you have on the outside here what we call the spinous process okay so this is the bumpies that you would see on your on your back here and then on the side, you have your transverse process. That's the one on this side. It looks kind of like that. Now this kind of goes more like this. Um, but you might want to note when you're doing this stuff that there's 12 of these. You know what I mean? And these have the little bumpies on the back end. All right. Um, uh, and then there's seven of these and five of those. Okay. Just so you know. Um, usually people always get the lumbar injured. Uh, you never see anybody get the thora uh, thoracic. I have a occasionally seen people get neck injuries. But anyway, so uh, just so you know, that's like that. Um, this looks mostly pretty good. Um, this you did a real nice job with. This this looks good. Uh, I would just say, like you kind of did here, try to, um, try to draw it in three quarters because you can get more out of that. The way that I was taught to dry, draw them in three quarters was to think of a box. Like so. So let's say we draw a box. Not crappily like I just did. But let's say I drew a, a well-proportioned kind of box shape. And then what you do is off the front of the box, you make a cutout. Okay? Like so. And then that kind of cuts across and over and back. And then what you would do is after you drew that, take this and take the opacity down a little bit. Not this one, this one. Oops. Okay. Let's back up. Uh, when you draw that, then you can use that to draw the um, the ilium. So this is the pubic bone. Pubic symphysis is a little piece of cartilage right here that, um, when women have kids, uh, gets soft. Um, and then kind of the ischium, and then you'd have your uh, acetabulum. Kind of goes like that. And then that goes like that. And then, you know, the great trochanter kind of come off. Um, but this is kind of how I was told to think of it, is like thinking of like a box with a hole in it. Um, sometimes see people will call it like a bucket. Um, you can see I kind of didn't that, do that good of a job. But uh, anyway, so there's that. Um, but yeah, not too bad. Um, you know, some of them, like this one's pretty good. Um, this has nice aspects too. It's just, I would just work a little bit on just tightening it up. Try to really, I mean, you probably see it every time I always draw like basically a circle because you can draw a circle in any direction. It just gets a little bit clunky in some areas. Um, so, uh, for next time, what I would do is draw, 
maybe you probably can do both. Do the appendicular skeleton, okay? So this is the axial, which is the the skull, spine, um, hips, right? Um, I think technically uh, the iliums, which is not part of the sacrum, but it's this is like the pelvic girdle. The iliums are these guys here, right? And then this is the pubic. I think technically these are considered appendicular, but I usually just put them as part of the, the axial. But I would do the appendicular. So what that means is the arm here. So you got your humerus, right? And then you got your ulna and radius, okay? Uh, and then your femur, okay? The big old bone. Uh, and then you got your tibia and fibia, okay? Tibia is the really triangular, it's your shin. And then the fibula is on the side, okay? So just like the ulna is kind of the bigger one that does the actual bending of your elbow, the radius is the one that kind of rolls over it. It's the thinner one. It's actually not that much thinner, but this one's considerably thinner. When people break their leg, they usually it's their fibula. Then you got a whole bunch of things in here, like the talus, and you got the tarsals, right? Oh, sorry, I didn't even finish the hand up here. So you got this, and then you got carpals, which is like, I think, like nine bones. I can't remember how many. Um, and then you got your metatarsals or metacarpals, sorry, and then you got your phalanges, which are fingers. Then down here, you'd have um, your tarsals, then metatarsals, which is the longer parts, and then it's also called phalanges for your toes, okay? Um, so I would do is maybe do the arms and legs, basically. Oh, yeah, also, um, you can go ahead and do what I would call the shoulder girdle, um, which is basically the scapula in the back here, and um, which has, like, that stuff. And then the, um, in the front, it's the, uh, maybe I'll shape this. In the front, it's the um, clavicle. And then off of that, that creates the glenoid fossa, which your humerus comes out of, okay? Um, but anyway, so this is the back, this is the front, and then your bone coming out, all right? So uh, do that part as well. And I would say that. And then we'll be done with the skeleton for the most part. Um, if you do want to start doing gesture drawings, let's just say let's do like 50 a week. And so what I would do is don't spend a lot of time on them. Just do a little quick, you know what I mean? Just, you know, not like hardly anything. So let's turn these off. So I don't really have anything in front of me, but literally let's say there was a guy and he's playing tennis or something. Ah, crap. Let me put a thing in here. Oops, G. X. All right. Um, and B. All right. Uh, so he's, you know, he's playing tennis or something. I'd have him like, uh, you know, you would. It's almost like a stick figure drawing, where he's lunging over, kind of a thing. I usually kind of do something real loose like that. And then what I'll do is after I get the basic idea of what, you know, we call this like the line of action. So there's this main motion that's moving this way. Um, once I get that. I will go through and kind of like fill it out knowing what I know to get a little bit more of, of the mass. If that makes sense. So, so, um, and then I would just, you know, but just try to, you know, and then, you know, you might have to move things around a little bit. So I got this, this thing there. Um, you know, I'm like, oh, you know what? That was too far back. So I got a, or not enough of a butt. It needs more of a crotch. I could put that down. And then I take this leg, and that's a little bit far off. So I'm going to go over here, you know, things like that. But um, it's terrible. But you get the idea. But I would just do a bunch of things that are basically like that, about that finished. I wouldn't, like, go crazy with it. Um, if you want to take, like, one or two of them and, like, make it more done, so, you know, because, you know, it's good to make cupcakes but the p fun part is frosting them right you mean you get to make it look nice and that's the part that everyone wants to eat um but without the cake there's no there's no cupcake you know what i mean so um do mostly this but if you want to take one or two and like finish them up you know what i mean do like kind of just general kind of like block shading you know and like really tighten it up or just kind of finish them that's fine but for the most part i would keep it mostly loose because your thing is just training your eye to quickly look at it, quickly jot it down, and just try to figure out the proportions. You'll move a lot quicker if you're just trying to bang them out, as opposing to like getting on a nitty-gritty detail where you're not looking at the whole thing as a whole. You're just looking at one part. You don't get as much out of that when you're trying to figure out proportions. 
All right, so that would be it, and good luck.